Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian, and we are continuing our coverage at the Royal International Air Tattoo at RAF Fairford in England. And we're honored to have with us Russ Bartlett, who is the CEO, President and CEO of Textron Airborne Solutions, which was born today. Russ, thanks for joining us. Vago, thanks for having me. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what the company is, what you guys are trying to accomplish. Well, we stood up this company today, Airborne Solutions, because there's a whole industry of commercial outsourced tactical air services that we want to be a part of. Our first acquisition was ATAC, the Airborne Tactical Advantage Company. That became the first piece of Airborne Solutions because they're experts at red air or adversary air. Um, what, um, you know, obviously, uh Draken uh, or is one of the companies that's in that field also that is seen as sort of a growing sector by some. Obviously, that's why you guys are targeting it. What, what sort of, you know, what's the size of this market and how much of a share do you think you guys can get, say, over the next five years? Well, as you mentioned, there are really about three competitors that are uh, credible in this field. The barriers to entry are significant. I mean, to buy foreign fighters and to safely certify them and put, uh, you know, ex-military pilots in them, that's, that's a lot to accomplish. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time with ATAC, uh, but this market is just really starting to take off. The Navy uh, got on board a long time ago. That was uh, our first customer as ATAC. But the Air Force has just realized that this is a viable, in fact, an essential way to save our combat jets, to let our pilots focus on their training rather than simulating being adversary pilots in adversary aircraft. So the concept is gaining strength and momentum, and so we're in at a good place. In terms of future investment, um, how much, you know, what are some of the other capabilities you guys plan to build either organically or through M&A? Uh, well, you hit the nail on the head. There's two ways to get there, either organically, because we are Textron, and we have all kinds of aircraft and services and simulation. So maybe we create for from example, within. For example, this aircraft that For is. example, the Scorpion <laughs> that is right here. How convenient. Uh, but we also will look. That was a total accident, by the way, that we ended up here. But go on. I had nothing to do with it, right? Uh, but we've also, we'll look at acquisitions as well, as we did with ATAC. What's the, st what's the overall market size that you're talking about here? Well, I would say today, if you look at the adversary air, the outsourced or commercially provided adversary air, now you're in the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, with the three companies we talked about. But the U.S. Navy and U.S. Air Force have each initiated major programs for fourth generation adversary support, each looking at around 3,000 hours per year. So that's right there, that doubles the size of this industry uh, with, with these two contracts. Uh, what is the kind of cost savings that you guys, I mean, what's sort of the business case you're making to the services in terms of what they save by bringing you in to do that as opposed to doing it organically themselves? Well, I think we offer three distinct advantages. Uh, first of all, we allow them to save hours on their current frontline fleet airplanes, their uh, frontline fighters, for example. Because we've been using them so aggressively for the last 15 years, we've got to make them last. And we've got to make them meet their shelf life, if you would. And the way we're flying them, to fly them also as adversaries, is just not sustainable. So that's number one, is preserving fleet asset. Number two is there's a real significant cost savings by going with a company like ATEC, who has bought these appropriate uh, and affordable foreign fighters and provided them as platforms back to the Navy and the Air Force at a significant cost per flight hour savings. And lastly, and perhaps most important, our pilots can now focus on blue force training, the stuff they're supposed to be doing, rather than emphasizing and using quality flight time, pretending to be an adversary. And what uh, type of aircraft is in the ATAC? What type of aircraft are in the ATAC fleet? The current ATAC fleet has uh, six supersonic Kafir aircraft from Israeli Industries, F-21. We have 16 Hawker Hunters, which is what we call our high subsonic aircraft. And we have four L-39 Albatross airplanes that we use primarily for air-to-ground support for those joint terminal attack controllers. Uh, they're, they're all uh, lovely airplanes. Russ, uh, congratulations and good luck on the business. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me.